Please uh, we'll call to order the meeting of the Zion City Council. Uh, the city clerk call the roll, please. Commissioner McKinney? Here. Commissioner McDowell? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Commissioner Dettine? Here. Mayor Hill? Mayor Hill. Um, Mr. Bremer, would you honor us by leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Everybody join us. <laughs> At Easter time, I preached a sermon entitled, Same Thing as Last Easter. Uh, my point was, it was not my job to be novel or inventive, but to say to the church the same old truth. And uh, this evening as I was driving over here, I was thinking, what am I going to pray? And I think I'm going to pray the same old thing I prayed last time. The needs haven't changed, um, and so it's a privilege to lift uh, you all up to God in uh, dependence on Him. We'll bow and pray. Uh, Father, I do pray again, and not for the last time, for the elected officials and other public servants in this room, that you would grant them uh, all the virtues and wisdom that they need to lead our community well. Wisdom, uh, integrity, uh, energy, help them to not grow weary in well-doing, uh, foresight, uh, courage to make tough decisions sometimes, uh, we pray for safety for our first responders. All these things we ask, Lord, so that our community might be just and safe and healthy, flourishing. We might please you in the way we live. To that end, we ask that the way business is conducted tonight would be honorable and uh, pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Our pastor tonight is Pastor Langley from uh, Christ Community Church. So thank you very much. Uh, are there any ch agenda changes from uh, the council? No agenda changes? Okay. Yes. Are people here for a special presentation? Anybody here for that special presentation that was to take place? I don't think anyone is here. Okay, we'll move along. Do we have to approve the agenda we wanted to meet that or just do we we'll set it aside to the <coughs> motion to delete that item yeah. then since then Okay, I'll make I'll make a motion to uh, table the special presentation from Zion Together. Second? Second. Clerk call the roll. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem de Team. Aye. Would the clerk uh, please read the uh, consent agenda? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, citizens' comments. <laughs> Clarissa Walker. There were some other names on there, so I thought. But anyway, my. Um I'm Clarissa Walker. I live at 2908 Gilboa here in Zion. I've lived here for over 40 years. My um, thing today is about your consent agenda. Your bills and vouchers don't seem to ever balance or the numbers are never correct. Well, they're correct at some point, but a lot of times they're incorrect. Now, if this is supposed to be a reflection of this city and what was done during the week, the two-week span or whatever, these should be correct. If you look at your uh, bills and vouchers today, they start with 131460 and they go through 131459. That can't be. Hopefully you're not going backwards. And... Um, to Juanita and I had discussed this once before. She had found one, and I had talked to Mr. Naval on one back in January. So this happens consistently. So my contention is, is that if your numbers are wrong, then your amounts are probably wrong, too. Any comment? I mean, uh, 
when you look back, corruption starts where nobody's paying attention. And it looks like nobody's paying attention. Nobody's minding the store. Can you, can you um, give me an example? <laughs> I mean, do you, uh, I'll give you an example. The numbers are not right. Um, the here back. The, um, the sequence. The sequence of your voucher numbers are incorrect. On the agenda. Under on the, the agenda. Consent. I believe. Just, I believe what happened in this one, and you're correct. The the 459 was the last number last of the last number. round, so it started with 460 this time, and I just think the last number didn't get updated. But you're you're correct. Um, the total is correct. But um, see, how but would you know the total was, is correct if the numbers aren't? Correct. The last number was was not updated on the agenda. But, but I'm just but it's saying still included that's in with the packets for the commissioners. Oh, you guys have the right numbers. We just don't have it just the right numbers. was updated on the agenda. We don't get the right ones. It was a, it was a, it was an error on the typing on the agenda. You're correct. Yeah, but it's several times. Director I mean, Nagel, is the figure right that comes the from the figure is right. The the final number in the sequence was not updated from the prior agenda. But I'm just saying that should be something that should be done so that we can. It just doesn't. It doesn't give a good look when you're trying to have uh, integrity and whatever within this council. Thanks for pointing that out. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Miss Walker. Uh, Jason Ellis, Zion. Mr. Detoo, nice to see you. Good to see you, Jason. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'd just first like to thank a few people, uh, Director Roberts and the Public Works. I think you guys have done a wonderful job clearing all the snow we have had. Um, the streets are, I think, we're in tremendous shape after all that. Uh, I know some people complain about it, especially the alleys, but uh, I think that's another issue that's been covered before with uh, some of the trucks not being able to get down there and stuff. Um, I'd also like to thank you for being one of the few uh, that work for the city that also live here. That's uh, nice to see. Uh, Commissioner McDowell, thank you for your willingness to meet with me and answer questions. As I've stated numerous times on Facebook and and face-to-face uh, -face with you, the residents truly appreciate you for being the sole voice of reason against tax and fee hikes here in City Hall. Please keep up the good fight. Uh, the mayor's not here, but I'm also going to thank him because he did try to set up a meeting with me and I was not able to, but I appreciate the open channel, even though that may have changed recently. Um, and lastly, uh, Mr. Nabel, uh, although I do disagree with a lot of the budgets, too, I do uh, appreciate that you've been willing to provide me information. Uh, you've gone above and beyond. Sometimes you've just reached out to me um, without me asking, so also appreciate that. Um, I will continue to hope that hopefully you actually live here one day as well. <laughs> and a few final remarks. I told Commissioner McDowell um, when we met, I want to encourage the city leaders um, to follow my lead. By years of not attending school board meetings, I'm getting involved. I think the city leaders need to be there, plain and simple. You guys lead this city. You need to be there. You guys deflect all the issues to the school boards. You keep saying it's all their fault. Will show up, make a difference. I didn't go for years, and I'm planning on being there constantly now. Uh, they need to hear the pressure from us, from the leaders in this city. They need to start working for us and not the administrations. And lastly, as I shared with Commissioner Dial, my nephew is a graduate at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and as a part of his final thesis for his master's in architecture, he is doing a research on the building of Zion as a city. I am encouraging anyone that may have historical blueprints or information regarding the city planning to please contact myself, and I will put you in contact with him. He has spent some time with the Zion Historical Society and has been talking with Commissioner McDowell, I believe, a little bit. That's all. Thank you. God bless Zion. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Doug Day, Zion. <laughs> Hello, Doug. All right. I just want to know why Barron ain't doing his damn job. I'm sorry? Barron from the, the building building department or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I live on Gabriel. Um, I've had, I rent a house. Landlord is cheap as hell, like a lot of landlords. 
I've had a mice problem come in through the foundation. It was just uh, determined two weeks ago through Orkin. They did an inspection. Uh, uh, Baron came out last week. As soon as he opened the door, the smell of everything hit him, and I've been cleaning that up for four months. I've been breathing in it for nine months. I've been hospitalized seven days, ten days, six days, four days, two days since this breathing all this into my system and it's making me sick. Orkin said that it is a foundation problem. I told Barron about it. Barron wants copies of the, of the report from Orkin in Waukegan, but apparently I'm not the name on it the landlord is. So when I told Barron last week about the situation, he came by, saw it, I think he took pictures. He said, I'll send a letter out. I said, no, I want this done fast. So he called the landlord Orkin came out for like the fifth or sixth time. For why they came out, he, the owner of the building thought that Orkin was going to clean it up. Orkin says, we don't clean it up. So they went round and round. Barron was out yesterday. I called Barron yesterday, told him it was a foundation problem. He wants paperwork that I can't get from Orkin. The landlord knows that the, the city is on him about the building. He's delaying everything, and I'm breathing that stuff, and I was throwing up blood this morning about ready to go back to the hospital. So my thing with Barron is whenever he came by last week for the first time and he called the landlord yesterday whenever he couldn't get that report I told him I said well call the landlord I can't keep breathing this stuff until now Orkin's coming out on Friday Orkin's going to do the foundation because you know it's a major I got like 40 50 mice down there and I've been going down there cleaning up smelling the stuff and, and getting sick so with Baron he called him the first day when he came out and said we got a problem why yesterday, whenever I called him, when I called him and I said, hey, I'm breathing this stuff in. I don't have the foundation papers to give to you because it's under the landlord's name. Give him a call. He didn't give him a call, and I'm still breathing this stuff in. At least if he'd have given him a call yesterday and said, hey, that basement, because of the smell, we got to get somebody out there now, and Baron ain't doing it, and I don't know when it's done, and I'm throwing up blood this morning again for the last eight months. So if Baron ain't doing his job, I need somebody to do it because it's a landlord foundation thing, which I checked with the village, but I can't get the paperwork from Orkin or the landlord because the landlord knows he's in trouble. And I don't know what the hell else to do except go home, breathe that stuff, and go back to the hospital. Have you uh, talked to uh, Rich Ionson? Then I talked, all I know is, uh, all I know at least in the past, uh, whenever I had a situation, I talked to Bobby, and because Bobby knows the guy, you know, it was this little stuff. But no, I know, but Barron never said to talk to anybody as far as, uh, you know, he didn't, what I'm saying is Barron didn't say to pass it forward. But Barron, Barron, um, I guess I'm getting lightheaded. Barron said uh, when he came out and he smelled, he said, wow, it almost knocked him out because it's their nesting, their pee, and their poop. And for the last six months, I get down there 10 minutes at a time, they tore my food pantry apart. I've lost hundreds of dollars. That's one thing. But when you go down and clean it up and spray, that, that there's a you know there's a mist that comes up there and it's just it's 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 eating at my immune system. Orkin said it's not good for you. They said tell the tell the Barry or Baron, and Baron he, why didn't he call yesterday? I'm still breathing that stuff for the next. Okay, let me the bell you heard is the time limit. Oh. Not allowed so much time. If you would talk to Rich Ianson from our building department, either uh, probably after the council meeting. Uh, he might be able to give you some advice or help. And uh, our commissioner for that department is uh, Billy McKinney, but I think uh, uh, Mr. Ionson would be able to help you. Okay, Baron never said no names. He kept it to himself. Okay. Mr. Ionson, is, uh, Rich, would you uh, raise your hand so this gentleman can chat with you? Okay, thank you, Mr. Day. Would the clerk uh, read the consent agenda? Excuse me, point of order. Uh, did you have to sign in before, for the comment period? Or yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Would you take anybody without signing in? For a group? I I was unaware that you had to sign in. He oh, was comment. Let him sign. Yeah. If you want to do that. He was here before. Yes. Yeah. Just sign in, sir. There you go. Okay. Mr. Litsky. Yes. John. 
How are you doing, Lloyd? Good to see you, John. Good to see you. I just uh, have a, a question regarding uh, the uh, driveway that is that I used to enter my property. I noticed in when I got a, a survey of my property that the property lines actually end at the sidewalk on the house side. And I was wondering the the parkway and the sidewalk as far as home ownership goes, we're responsible for mowing the lawn and also for shoveling the sidewalk from what I understand. But I want to know the status of the driveway that I use to enter my property. Is that a private driveway or is it a public driveway? The reason I ask this is because I've had a situation where I went to the building department and asked them the status of it and they said that it's considered a public driveway because it goes across the parkway. And we, I don't own the parkway, okay? And when I've had instance to uh, address it with the police department, I've had officers tell me when I've, when I've reported people drive, parking across the, the driveways that it's their personal driveways. And when I asked, uh, the, I told the officer that the building department told me that that's public. They, that one officer told me, he said he didn't care what the public uh, building department said it was. Okay. So I want, I would like the attorney to tell me the driveway that. I would, sir, I would look at your survey first before I did anything else. Well, it's, the survey shows that my property starts on the, sidewalk side mm -hmm. toward the house and that's where the property line is so my question is who has ownership of that driveway that i use to enter my property how long is it does it make any difference how long it is yeah. it's a city it's a city lot did you ever review this director ianson no i'm not familiar with this situation okay. the approaches they're considered driveway approaches those are considered ownership of the homeowner because it's a private entrance to the single and that's point. the only resident residence that it services right. correct right right that's why the city does not maintain those it is on city property however it is maintained uh by the individual homeowner okay Did so answer your question somewhat but the, but the situation is such that i have uh, a neighbor who constantly parks across that driveway and your, I, driveway. your driveway no not my driveway his driveway which is immediately across the street from mine okay you mean the sidewalk parks across the sidewalk sometimes but parks across on the street parking blocking the driveway completely so it narrows it down for use of my driveway so when you're trying to come get in, in or out he's blocking you. he's blocking it okay so uh, I, I know that there's one uh, ordinance on there saying that you're not allowed to, pri to park across a private or public driveway unless it's for uh, a temporary period of time, I'm paraphrasing it, for offloading in that. But this gentleman will park all day long across the driveway. Across okay. his own driveway? Well. Which impedes your access? Correct. Okay. So that was my question, is, well, is your driveway? Well, question was, is your driveway public or private? Well, right? it, it applies, yeah, it right. applies to everybody. Never, without going through the, I've never seen reference to a public in terms of what you're referring to. I've never seen, so I would say it's a private drive because I've never, they were never considered public. So, so the, or, question, the ordinance says that you can't, park across a private or a public right. so regardless of yeah. what, how you qualify his driveway he can't be impeded he can't be parking across it I um, mr. Deteen, uh when he was a chief of police went and confronted the gentleman it's it's how many years ago what has it been you know since you were a chief of police <laughs> so this has been ongoing ongoing now. ongoing constant I, I would refer our you to our police chief, chief. he'd yeah. be able to okay. talk to you john and maybe uh, advise you uh, what you should do as far as enforcement is concerned i don't know that uh, 
Yeah. Uh, Thank you. You can add anything to it. It's good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. We have any others? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, would you please read the consent agenda? Sure. <coughs> Minutes of a regular meeting held on February 19, 2019 at 7 p.m. and approval but not release of closed session minutes of a meeting held on February 19, 2019 at 7.25 p.m. Bills, vouchers 131460 through 131554 drawn on Huntington National Bank total $470,788.92. I'll make that motion and then um, just make that correction on the voucher. Um, it should be uh, 131554 instead of 459. Okay. On the agenda. On the agenda, yeah. I'll second. Second the motion. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem to Team? Aye. Uh, eight, eight, eight. eight. Okay. Consider an ordinance as follows. To lease certain property located in the city of Zion, this is the second reading, uh, for Administrator David Nagel. Mr. Nagel. Thank you, Mayor Dean and Commissioners. We discussed at the last meeting an extension of a due diligence period for the solar lease project, or the solar panel project over on the 17th Street landfill. This is just the ordinance. Uh, for the second reading uh, for approval. And I recommend approval of the amendment to the lease agreement. Is there a motion to approve the second reading? I'll move to approve the second reading of the lease amendment for the solar power project. Second. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Mayor, I, maybe I'll just, um, or Mayor Pro Tem, sorry. Um, I'll just mention that because it's a second reading, that means we already have discussed it at our last meeting and we already voted and approved it at our last meeting. This just gives the council one last time to take a look at this to see if anybody has changed their mind. That's why it's called the second reading. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, discussion and authorization or, authorization or approval uh, of 9A. Consider the approval of invoices from Campanella and Sons, Wadsworth, Illinois, for emergency sanitary manhole repair in the 3100 block of Bethel Boulevard uh, for Director Robert. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, January 1st, residents of the 3200 block of Bethel reported they were experiencing sanitary backups. Public Works personnel were dispatched and determined that a portion of a 12 inch sanitary main was collapsed and a sanitary manhole required replacement. Additionally, two water mains were required to be removed in order to make the repairs and replacement of the manhole. Due to the size and depth of the excavations, and an outside contractor was needed to make necessary repairs. Staff is requesting payment for two invoices from Campanella and Sons, Wadsworth, Illinois, in the amount of $145,000. $158.10 for the sanitary main replacement, and then $109,801.41 for the sanitary manhole, manhole and water main, water main replacement. Is there a motion to approve these bills? I'm going to move to approve the uh, payment of these invoices for the emergency man sanitary manhole repair. Just to note that the total for that was $154,959.51. I'll, I'll, I'll second, and then I, I do have a question for Director Robert. So how old, how old would you estimate that sewer manhole system to be? What was that? How, how old? How long has it been there? I'm guessing uh, probably the 40s because it was brick. Okay. It wasn't solid concrete. Um, and it was 22 feet deep. So it's been there a long time. Yes, I sir. thought me, my, my grandfather, as I told you before, had your position back in the 30s. And I'm thinking maybe he put that in. Good <laughs> yeah. No, it lasted a long time. We did name the manhole Commissioner McDowell's manhole. So <laughs> you're, the one, you're the one that reported it to me. 
He's the trouble man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion and uh, a second. Yes. Second and a power roll, please. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Nine B. Consider approval of Zion Crossing Partners LLC application to participate in the CDBG commercial sign and facade and improvement program for Director Nagel. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. This is another application under the, the grant that we got from CDBG that we basically are just the administrators for. Um, we for businesses that want to do facade or imp improvements under the grant, um, they can get a percentage reimbursement under that grant for the work they do. We just review the application, submit it. It has to go before council before for approval for the application before um, they can move forward. This is no of no cost to the city. We're just kind of the pass-through agency from the CDBG program. Um, so this is for signage out at uh, the Zion Crossings um, out at 173 in Green Bay. They're going to be doing some monument signs out there. Um, and the total cost of the project is not to exceed $36,500. The maximum reimbursement from the CDBG, CDBG grant for this project will not exceed $18,250. And I would recommend approval of the application as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the application. Second. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dutine? Aye. 9C, request permission to fill two patrol officer vacancies and request the next two candidates from the Police and Fire Commission uh, Police Officer Eligibility List for Chief D uh, Dumia. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioners. Uh, May 1st, one of our veteran lieutenants retired from the Police Department. Well, this will uh, create a vacancy in patrol as supervisor staff are promoted to fill the ranks. In addition to the aforementioned, aforementioned vacancy, our department still has a vacancy that remains to be filled. I respectfully request the City Council approve the filling of these police officer positions from the current eligibility register of police officer candidates established by the Zion Board of Fire and Police Commission. If approved, these two new officers will attend the Police Academy in June of this year. Finance Director Naval has confirmed this will not have a significant impact on our budget due to the pay difference between the veteran officer and the starting pay of a new officer and some other financial factors. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve this request for hiring two new patrol officers. Is there a second? So moved. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Uh, 9D. <laughs> Consider approval of a memorandum of understanding between the Zion Park District, Zion Benton Public Library, and Christian Assembly of God for a warming and cooling <laughs> centers within the city of Zion for Chief Lewis. Chief? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I'm going to talk a little slower so I don't speed through it. No, yeah, I get my ears don't listen as fast as you talk. I'm at the February 5th City Council meeting. Council approved the uh, warming and cooling center policy I brought forth, which identified four cooling and warming centers. One was City Council Chambers here, Zion Benton Public Library, Zion Park District Leisure Center, Christian Assembly of God. Uh, a signed memorandum of understanding was received from the library, the Park District, and the Christian Assembly of God. Uh, the MOUs have a term of two years, which time we can review them. Uh, each MOU in your pack is identical, except for the name of the identified center and the authorizing signature. So I just re respectfully request you approve the attached memos. Um, we'll have the mayor sign and date them, and then we'll distribute them accordingly. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve these uh, centers, the Zion Public Library, Zion Park District Leisure Center, and Christian Assembly of God as warming and cooling centers. Second. Second. Thank you. Right, clerk, call the roll, please. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. No pro tem to team. Aye. Well, we're on number 10, the department uh, commentary. Any of you have anything you'd like to say? Anything to report or something interesting to pass along? Community? No. Okay. Uh, 
the, here's the announcements. Uh, March the 18th through the 30th, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., there will be early voting at City Hall. Early voting starting the 18th of March through uh, the 30th, starting at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays, uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also on March the 19th, uh, 6.15 p.m., Zion Township Board Meeting, and at 7 o'clock, the Zion City Council Meeting. And April the 2nd, 7 p.m., Council Meeting and Election Day. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem, the team? Aye. Thank you.